immoral, and wrong. This is the Modern Eater Show. Piping hot and delicious. The Modern Eater. Boom, boom. You're hot. And now your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. You better believe it. No, uh, man, it's Master Live Radio right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman steering the ship with me here tonight. It's a good day in the Mile High City as we uh, embark after a bomb cyclone took out. Yeah. Brian, your business, Growers Organic. Oh, it was nuts, man. It was nuts. Yeah, oh, we did not power from Wednesday until last night at midnight. Same with Rockalitas Tortillas. Yep. A lot of hyper-local companies. It's tough to be in this business of food. Um, but as we forge forward, we're going to give you a great show tonight. And, uh, again, live from Studio Kitchen Colorado on our iHeartRadio affiliate, 630 KHOW. Check it out. We're going to have next hour, here's a highlight, uh, councilwoman at large. Her name is Debbie Ortega. And if you've lived in Denver for any extended amount of time, you've heard the you word Debbie know her. Ortega. You should know her. An old friend of mine, Kyle Zeppelin, is going to stop by. Um, what things Kyle went on to, and we grew up together. But uh, if you've heard of Rhino, you've probably heard of Zeppelin and Zeppelin Development. So Kyle Zeppelin's going to stop by the show. Great brewery in uh, Spangalang Brewery here tonight. And uh, why Say not? Say that again fast. Spangalang. 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 What a name. I like it. I like name. it. I like it. Block Distilling is in the house tonight, too. Wow. That's pouring really some cool. gin that is just knocking people's socks off. A couple of great chefs. Sean Lauer from Hop Alley. He'll be in the kitchen for us tonight and uh, truly doing a great job, along with uh, Marielle D'Onofrio from Anote. And I uh, can't wait to talk to these two great chefs as they're putting food out for us. In the next segment, it'll be Bill and Kelly Parker from Parker Provisions. But in the meantime and in between time, why not? Why not? Let's introduce these gentlemen to the show. It's JT Everly and Andrew Ferris. How are you boys doing from Pasture Provisions? Good, good. How are you doing? Welcome doing to the show. That was a mouthful, huh? Yeah, yeah welcome, guys. <laughs> gotta, Covered it all. Yeah. Got to get all of that out. So as we venture in, first of all, first time in our little hyper-local church here. Uh, I came, I uh, cooked with um, Chef Brother Luck. I got to do an appetizer. Uh, nice. I didn't get to get featured on the show, but it was an awesome experience to see how this whole program works. And Jay was so kind to invite us out to talk about what we're doing to raise the hyper-local movement around Colorado food. First time on the show. Yeah. And uh, thank you for coming as well, Mr. Yeah, Ferris. absolutely. You got it. <laughs> we talked about it. Um, well, Greg, and you don't know, these guys are walking the walk when it comes to hyperlocal. Our friends at Pastures Provisions, they've been buying from growers for years already. Since they started up, we were already instant partners. They were doing hyperlocal. They can buy this local produce, but then they're bringing over stuff from the Western Slope, which is so cool because... Like we were talking with Andrew. Tell us more. This thing started in Montrose, but you guys went to school together. Yeah, well, we went to school together in Boulder, and I moved from my day job out to the Western Slope. So I was in Grand Junction, but did a lot of, a lot of stuff out Gunnison, Montrose, Delta. And there's a lot of great ranchers and farms out there. Um, so, you know, I kind of got hooked up with Bill Parker over here. And, you know, it sprung from that. He was doing super into grass-fed. Um, and that's the area of the state we just really have it. The, the high mountain pastures, the, you know, warm days, cold nights when it's good. And, um, you know, we're like, we, there's, those guys struggle with getting some of that stuff to the front range. And we're like, you know, I think we can, we can really help with that. So that's kind of where, you know, kind of where it came from. Good for you guys. I'll tell you, I, you know, I built my career out of supporting these little local guys. I think it's, a, it's something that's really important because, no, you, like you said, these, these are the unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your what's your favorite little place? What's what's the favorite for Andrew? Because you yeah. you guys, I mean, and then tell us more about JT over here because he's one of your college buddies. Yeah, yeah. No, my favorite place. I mean, I love, you know, I'm a Denver guy. I'm from Denver, but I lived out there for a long time. I love the Black Canyon, the Gunnison River, oh my gosh, do a yeah. lot of fly fishing. I love Gunnison. I love Montrose. Um, JT's the same way. Actually, he told me about the Black Canyon before I even moved out there. Did you guys? Yeah. I so think we're, I we're on the same page fish. about that stuff. <laughs> well, you guys, I, I don't know if you know that, but Black Canyon is a microclimate, one of the ones that we have here in Colorado. Not a lot of people realize that, that you can grow some incredible stuff. The season's way different in the Black Canyon than it is 
for a lot of the other farmers on the Western Slope. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we work with some farmers out of the Paonia and Hotchkiss area. So that nice banana belt there, yep. pumping out great produce as well as pigs and as well as pigs, poultry yeah. and other things that we're getting from that region as well. Farmer that was Paonia. Cody, right? Uh, it, Cody, we need to we need to turn uh, you guys Toby. on. Toby. Toby. Oh, Toby. 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 Yes. Our guy is Toby yeah. uh, of Colorado Pasture Pork out in Hotchkiss. Does yeah. Yes, awesome that's where we were. Full yeah. pasture pigs. Yeah, yeah, we went out and met Toby. Yeah. It was oh, super yeah. cool. He's, a, he's legit. Took yeah. The, yeah. Took the we, dog we, down by the river. Yes, he's right on the North Fork of the Gunnison. And, and he's just like to an old. see what, it, what what they're doing. I mean, and that's true. I mean, he personifies local to yes. me and what he does, and just the ethos of, you know, is he certified organic? You know, he's not certified, but, but he's, he's doing it all practice. organic. I yeah, think he's. He might actually. You know what? You right. You might be right. He is is Toby guys? Yeah. Yeah. He's not he, certified he, organic yet. He's not. Okay, so, but he could. He definitely qualify. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, yeah, does he qualify? He is right there. Yeah. He, but no, Toby. Toby is when the first day I met him, I was like, "This is this is it. This is our guy. Like, we got to bring this stuff to more people." You know, he's doing a small amount of pigs. How's he doing? He's doing great. Good. Yeah, yeah XP score. He's only guy. got a hundred uh, hogs. Hundred fifty, but like he's like growing. But you know, it's just like his whole the first time he moves time, them from pasture to pasture absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean this uh, he cares about him the first time i ever bought pigs from him he texted me at four in the morning when he was taking them to the processor and everybody wants to hear about it but like you know and he's like okay it's nice and cool i was you know they were con he just truly cares about them he gives me like a play-by-play -play. i'm yeah. like well, i really appreciate that and that's like what i'm that's what i was looking for and i really found that in toby and bill and that's why we're here so nice. as we talk about the kind of the hyper local movement, and you know what strikes me as we go out on these road trips and we see these places, how come there aren't places like Montrose when there's so many agricultural folks, you, you can't get a good meal. <laughs> yeah, it's well, the, you, you, you just can't whole find other thing. Yeah, yeah, the food. It's like I mean uh, the stuff I see. <laughs> Am I wrong on this in rural areas? Well, man, the restaurant of, scene isn't quite as good, but the. I mean, if you're cooking, the ingredients you can get are, hey, top-notch. Yeah, yeah, Bill and Kelly provide some product to local restaurants in the Gunnison area. Really? So, yeah, so there's some people that are realizing the quality of the product they have right in their backyard yeah. and starting to put that on the plate. Well, it's interesting because in Grand Junction, you've got some great, you know, Ben 606, Rude, or Rude 606, Ben 707. That's right. Are a couple of places. Yeah. Yeah, the, the guys on at Rude are, I'll tell you, Route 626 is just crushing it with yeah. doing it right. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, when we lived in Junction, we visit both those places routinely. There, that was, there's not a lot outside of that, but there's, there's yeah. a couple. Yeah. Yeah. You guys. Awesome. I love what you're doing. And tonight, um, are you working with these chefs as well? In yeah, so capacity? Chef Sean Lauer, we've done a few events uh, at the Grow House. We did their Tambian dinner, which is a great uh, cause and raises awareness and brings quality food to communities uh, that don't necessarily have access to that up in um, the Swansea neighborhood. And so we cooked with him for the first time there. We've worked with Marielle for a long time, and Sean's put some of our products uh, that we're carrying through Toby and Bill on his menu. Awesome. They're at Hop Alley, so it's uh, great to see it. And How about some other that. partners that you'd like to shout out to? Yep. Um, Anybody? Yeah, we, we work with other local caterers and yeah. chefs. So we've worked with Supper Bell recently. They did their Valentine's special with our some of our products. Some of the baby foods got beef broth in yeah. it, and so they're using our soup bones for that. Uh, we work with uh, White Sparrow Food Co. She does a lot of our cooking for events, That's as well as doing Colton private Gray. chef work. Uh, we work with Colton Gray as well. So, what's your model? Are you looking to do business with more restaurants? Or are you looking to go direct to consumer? Or what? What do you look? Uh, yes, all yeah, of the above. Direct to consumer no, direct is really the consumer. core business. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's farm to door. So we want to bring these farms to your door. Uh, I guess we are the middleman, but we try to avoid the other middlemen in the process. So Sourcing buy direct from the stuff. farm, work directly with the processor, and then get the product to the door. So we do the whole animal, and it gives people uh, a chance to not only get great product, but get a great variety that they would normally kind of pass over in, in the market. Instead of going to one of these ranches and buying a whole cow or a half a cow and sure. splitting it or a pig or whatever, um, we can deliver it to you the same exact quality beef that you would go to those places for um, in smaller quantities on a, you know, a regular basis, and you don't have to have a freezer in your garage. Wow, are you left with all the ground beef? We <laughs> that's, yeah, well, <laughs> that's usually <laughs> the <laughs> business conundrum yeah. when it ground yeah. beef mountain. <laughs> yeah, ground yeah, beef no, we do mountain. have some ground yeah. beef. That's that a lot of the restaurants come to play for yeah. that. In different How can people that want to play with you with the apostles of the culinary church out there that this is the type of stuff I believe in, but I want to know how, how and where can I get it yeah. online? Yeah, so we are 100% web based. So you go onto our site. We've got baskets that meet the needs from a 
person living alone in an apartment to a family with eight kids running around. So we've got basket sizes to meet all family needs. I'm getting the basket. Yep. This is, how this do you is get really it? great. Yeah, how do you, just right on the website? Right on the website, pastureprovisionsco.com. And uh, we just put up a code today, Modern Eater, all caps. Get 20% off your first delivery to give it a try. So wow. Nice. That's, that's awesome, that's guys. Cool. Thank you. That's really um, cool. Take them up on that, 20% off. The Modern Eater, right? Uh, PastorProvisionsCo.com is yep. the website. Perfect. Yep. Thanks, boys. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, We're glad to be here. Great enjoy enjoy the food. Yeah. Uh, Bill and Kelly Parker are coming up next from yeah. uh, Parker Pr Pastures. Parker, Parker Pastures. Pastures. Yeah. That'll be next. And don't forget, uh, top of the hour. She's a councilwoman at large, and her name's Debbie Ortega. We're going to talk about some cool stuff, some initiatives that are happening right here in Colorado, food-oriented that I think you'll be interested in. Stay tuned right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. It's home because I like I grew up in a small ranching town, had a lot of ranchers that show a lot of love to their animals and produce. Mm -hmm. And I feel like respecting the people that respect their animals, no antibiotics, no hormones, things like that. I think that it's just responsible to understand where you're getting your produce from, where you're getting your meats from. For instance, Bill from Pasture, Pasture Farms, like all these little places that take and respect their uh, their ingredients. It's, it's so. awesome. You know, it seems like the more you know, the more reverence you treat it. And I've eaten at your restaurant. I know you're doing that great, baby. Absolutely. Thank you so you're much. You're rocking down there. And he's just a neighbor. He's down the block. <laughs> I'm on 31st and Lemmer. He's on what, 35th? 30th and Yeah, 35th. 35th. Oh, man, that's, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Sean. Hey, Modern Eater family, we're going to take a break here. We'll be back in just a sec. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Okay, so, that's Sean. Oh my God. Fuck. Charlie, how are you? Great to see you. Yeah. How's everything going? Good. Did you uh, get through the outages and stuff okay? Well, we had about five hours of outage on Wednesday. That's, that's not bad. Good, good. Yeah, so I'm just coming from Collaboration Fest. How'd it go over there? Whoever you got teamed up with is lucky. Yeah, we got teamed up with that. The Thirsty Nice. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so. All right, we can do this back to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio, live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. This is a cool one. Again, 7 o'clock. It's going to be cool with uh, Councilwoman at large. Debbie Ortega is going to join us. Uh, that'll be a fun one to hear. But in the meantime and in between time, Bill, Kelly, and Chloe Parker from Parker Pastures. Welcome to the show. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Awesome to be here. Hi, guys. Yes, welcome. Everybody's looking great, sounding great, smiling. Why not? All's well in the world as we uh, venture into really a season of, I mean, it's glorious season. Yes. Everything, you know. It's a, the, because the we're right at spring. Yeah, I it's know. Just, oh. 
So much it's hope. good. And isn't Bill's smile infectious there? <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Parker Pastures. Uh, tell, first of all, I'll start from the beginnings. Tell us about Parker Pastures. It, it's uh, the family name. Yes. And no relation to R.J. Parker. He well, could. maybe. Jay's still <laughs> researching that, I think. Yeah. Um, hey, listen, I just met these guys, but I, tr I think they're family already. Did you, <laughs> did you turn in for Ancestry.com to try and attach yourself? No, to I didn't do that, but I told Bill on the phone that I have a Bill Parker in my family. <laughs> but he's old and probably dead. I don't know. But he existed <laughs> at one point. Yes. No relations. Not yet. Adam, not yet. <laughs> he's, a, he's a guy you'd want in the family. So yeah. talk about this family business. Well, the, our mission of Parker Pastures is to produce healthy land, healthy animals, and healthy and happy people. What a concept. Regenerative ranching is what you're calling it, Bill. Yes, sir. So and are you following those regenerative? Because that's a big thing I'm into because it's the no-till. There's a lot of stuff that is behind regenerative that people don't realize, and it includes animals. And it's how to, it's almost like a biodynamic certification in a sense. But, yep. Yeah, talk about it. First of all, I want to make the point to say it's amazing when you hear this story that this is called non conventional. This isn't, yeah. con that blows my mind. Why isn't this conventional? And talk about it. I believe it should be. It should be, and I think it, it is coming that way, but basically, you know, we've, we've talked about sustainability for years, and, like, we live in, in the arid west, and the land has been desertifying. And if we manage our animals right and participate in the way nature intends, we can actually improve the land. And, and we measure that. Like, are we really doing it, or we just think we're doing it? Are we improving the, the uh, soil organic matter? Are we increasing species diversity, both in the soil life, microbiology, um, the plant diversity, wildlife. Um, basically, we think that we believe in abundance. And if we, if we do agriculture correctly, abundance is possible for all. Well, that's I'd interesting. I love to hear that. I, I do, to too. That. It's interesting as we go tour farms and ranches yep. that um, great with your practices. What's Farmer Bill doing up the road? downstream from you or what are the the conventional way of farming and ranching so how do you keep that ecosystem well unfortunately conventional agriculture has kind of been sold out to the the input business and you know like regenerative agriculture we don't need to go to the store and buy a bunch of new fertilizer every time you know we're 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 cycling that organic matter that's there we're using the animals to graze an area, urinate in, on an area, defecate on that area, and then, then let it let it alone, let it grow back, and give that time before we graze it again. The neighbor down the road, he might just lock his cows in the same pasture for the whole summer. Might does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you drove around, I guess. <laughs> so you know, those plants never have a chance yeah. to really grow up and and do what so they're supposed to. So we talk about do. sustainability. To you guys, and, and, and I'll throw it to you. Um, Kelly, is that a sustainable model? Is that a sustainable model with your land? I mean, we talk about business. We'll talk about that is not how you maximize what you can do. But cutting corners is a terrible thing for all of us. So how do you not cut corners, and how do you keep that a sustainable model? Mm -hmm. The biggest part is a plan. If you can imagine, we, we spend a lot of time yeah. creating a grazing plan to make sure that our animals are in the right place at the right time for the right reasons. Yep. And we are not, we didn't discover these concepts. You know, we have studied and followed people who come before us. Uh, Alan Savory is kind of the godfather of the regenerative movement as far as livestock. And so we've s spent a lot of time studying and experiencing. Making a lot of mistakes. Making lots of mistakes. <laughs> That's how we learn. That is how we learn. Yeah. 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 But the bottom line is if you use nature as your model, it's, it's very forgiving. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people really can connect to the concept that we're modeling after, you know, the great herds and their pack hunting predators. Mm -hmm. So the great herds of bison, how they migrated across the landscape with their pack hunting predators, putting pressure on them. They would use an area and trample the area, and then they would move on, and they wouldn't come back until the next season, maybe two seasons. And that's nature's model. That's yep. Plants need to be grazed, but 
they, it, they need time to recover as well. Great. Uh, so nature's model, that's your ethos, right? That's what you believe in. To instigate that, to follow through and perpetuate it, it's not an easy thing, so you stand by it. So your land represents you guys and your thought process, which I think is so cool. Clo? Yeah, Chloe? it does. Um, I'm so grateful for my parents because they've discovered this, and we've met amazing people from this. And the land and the animals, it's just so amazing to see how it improves, and it keeps improving, and I don't think it's going to ever stop improving either. And well, and Chloe, you're and the one who raised on with her. Chloe raised this so lamb cool. that we're about to eat tonight. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Chloe? Yes, I did. Nice. And now, how old was this lamb? It was under a year, probably about eight months. Wow. Okay. Nice. We've seen yeah. a lot of that. Um, eight months is that that point in time. So it, it hadn't been uh, weaned yet, right? Um, the mothers pretty much wean their lambs on their own, so there's no stress involved. We don't have to take them away from their mother, so they're they're weaned by the time they're harvested. So how can people learn more about you guys and your thought process and what you actually practice? And then the products. Yeah. Well, parkerpastures.com, hooking up with Pasture Provisions. Um, those guys are offering a great service down here in, in Denver and delivering what we're producing up in the Western Slope down here, door to door. Um, you know, we're shipping meat, but... Uh, and also, you know, we want people to come see it. You know, come up to Gunnison. You um, better be careful, man. Yeah. <laughs> you give out your cell phone number, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he would. Yeah, yeah. Come, come and see. Hey, you know what? what? Can we take you up on that offer? We'd you like to you. come see Yeah, you. we yeah. would like um, to come. That, that's what we like to do and, and take a look and uh, highlight. Give the voices because um, it warms my heart. It's Chloe, it's Chloe right? Yes. As Chloe, um, she believes in this wholeheartedly as well. And she's going to make sure somebody else does. And that's what's keeping this all alive, this non-conventional thinking. Regenerative. How? People should go check it out. This is regenerative ranching yep. at its best. That is so right. cool. Um, inspiration. Your inspirations. Each other. Yeah. You've learned from somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I mean, Alan Savory and the Savory Institute. And other, other good ranchers, you know, pe like places that... They've actually transformed their land where taking an arid ranch and all of a sudden springs are coming out of the ground or, you know, animals that weren't there for 50 years are returning or plants that weren't there, you know, like to actually talk to the ranchers and see their landscape. And that's inspirational, you know, knowing that, you know, we have a tendency in our culture to think that humans don't aren't part of nature you know in order to save nature we got to get get the hell out of the way but that's not right like we're part of nature and if if we're paying attention everything's good so we do a road trip every year in uh, springtime and we go and we uh, basically just source killer products it's, yeah it's our road trip yeah. and we visit Is ranches along farms our, our route or oh yes they are okay yes they and are then we take uh, we get these people that want they want to see where their food's coming from we have a contingency of people that love the hyper local community and then we take all these great source products and we bring them back for a summer dinner series Nice. And we have great chefs come in and do that. We'd like to have you guys involved in that road trip and summer dinner series. Fantastic. Cool. What an cool. honor. That'd be well, so thank cool. You. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Parker Pastures, no relation to Jay Parker. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Be, oh, he in, they invited yep. people up, Jay. Do you have come a 40-year-old uh, daughter? Hey, 40, 43. Well, I mean, I'm 42. I think 40 is reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thank you guys so much. We're going to get into some chefs next. And uh, uh, Mariella, Marielle, right? No Ella. Marielle D'Onofrio from Minote. She's going to come up next and show us some great food. It's uh, 630 on 630 KHOW, an iHeart radio station. And we will return for, with Marielle D'Onofrio. And don't forget that at the top of the hour, she's going to come on. Councilwoman at large, Debbie Ortega. We'll take that break right now. Uh, from our iHeart radio stations from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Stick around and make sure you check out Facebook Live. It is the Modern Eater Show. Facebook family of the Modern Eater. We're going to talk on this segment real quick about education. And, and part of that, I've got the godfather of Colorado culinary, 
and, and there's a story here on education. Let's talk about ProStart and your involvement in ProStart. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, back in around 2000, uh, we kicked off ProStart with the uh, Colorado Restaurants Association, and it has grown across uh, Colorado, and not only Colorado, but across the United States. The National Restaurant Association took our template where we have today 30 high schools across the landscape of Colorado, and we have over 900 high school students in a hospitality to career path. And now, as a result of that, in these United States, there are over 125,000 high school students. It's amazing. And all these states, it's, it's amazing. A great. Robbie, we're going to have to break, but all, any of you, if you need ice cream, this is the guy, Robbie Hahn. We'll be right back. Try Babbel for free. Go to Babbel.com or download the app and try it for free. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L.com, or download the app to try it for free. That's Babbel.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. Rockalitas, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. Hey, it's Greg Holland back. Any more these days, when I go out to eat, I not only want to eat delicious food and drinks, but I also want to eat where I know my money is going to a local restaurant that I believe in. I believe in the Goods Restaurant on Colfax and Mark Whistler. The Goods is a community restaurant and bar with a menu focusing on vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, and keto options. Comfort food lovers, try the best burger on planet Earth. I love it. Eight ounces of grass-fed beef and never, ever any hormones, antibiotics, or steroids. The Goods is truly a cultural melting pot, a family restaurant open to all. Their bar program is amazing. Saddle up at their long, luxurious bar, have a nice craft beer or a cocktail. Like their Facebook page and stay up on amazing events and specials. Thirty. We located on East Colfax, directly connected to the Tattered Cover Bookstore, across from East High School with free parking and a garage in back. Look them up online, thegoodsrestaurant.com. I'll see you at The Goods. Hey, it's Greg Hollenbach. Thanks for tuning in to The Modern Eater Show. If you love The Modern Eater, and I know you do, why don't you support our sponsors? We spend a lot of time finding you the best hyper-local sponsors, and we'd appreciate it so much, just like they would, if you would make sure that you did business with them. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, everybody. This is Chef Carrie Baird from Bardo here in Denver. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That sounds good. <laughs> and you are listening to The Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Uh, you better believe it. Oh, now, my, sorry about that. Popping bottles. <laughs> it's popping <laughs> off here in Studio <laughs> Kitchen, Colorado, and why not? Top of the hour, 7 o'clock. We already said it. Councilwoman at large, Debbie Ortega, is going to join us on the show. And uh, there's Debbie right there. Right there. Debbie. Now the food is served. She's walking around looking at some good food. The food is served. I always say, Brian, this show is uh, like a oatmeal raisin cookie. You bite into it. You figure out it's a chocolate chip cookie. Then you figure out it's an edible. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen on this show. And um, Mariel D'Onofrio is with uh, Anote. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome Thanks for having to the me. show. Thank you. I'd like to compliment myself because I'm terrible with names. You pronounced that perfectly. I'm very I impressed. I did. Fantastic. First and of you, all, she would tell you the truth because she's an East Coaster, <laughs> and uh, you know. You know that. You know that's how we go. <laughs> she's not gentle with you. <laughs> she's a firecracker. She had to put a little reminder note on her hand there. Show it to the camera. That. What I the love reminder that. I don't know if I can is. see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on my best behavior with my language. Uh, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, here we go. First of all, a note. What is it? Uh, so a note means one night in Italian. So this company started, we did a lot more pop-up events. Um, but still we keep that. That, that is so cool. Yeah, it was really, like it's that. been really fun one to do night. that. And everything's always different. So every menu is different. Every venue is different. Um, and, we, and we create everything for the space. Let's do a pop-up here sometime. I'm down to do it. Wouldn't that be cool? Heck yeah. I like that. So one night, Brian, you know what one night means. A note, babe. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I like how she can multitask. She's doing some things. So what I want you to do is describe what you're putting together for these folks. And if you're on Facebook Live, you're getting a much better treat. But talk like you're describing for folks that are just listening on the radio. So right now I'm zesting an orange, yes, which probably is. looks very exciting, but if you can't see it, it doesn't sound like anything. Well, it's delicious. It does smell really good. Yes, it does. Um, so I'm zesting an orange, and we're going to mix this in with a little bit of sugar and then do like a creme brulee top on top of these budinos. Ooh. So a budino is like a, a grandma's Italian pudding. It's something my grandmother used to make all the time. Well, then wait, you are a little bit of an international traveler, aren't you? Because you spent some time in Italy. I did, yeah. I lived in Italy for nine months. And before that, we used to go once every year when we were growing up. We had cousins that lived in Rome, and it was always everybody at the table yelling and taking shots of limoncello no matter how old you were. And that was my first real culture shock of, okay, this is how, this is how I want to be living my life all the time. <laughs> well, I would have never guessed she's Italian, would you? Never. 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 No, no never. I definitely you, not. Definitely it, not. It's interesting because you look at the cultures, and, and food is just a celebration, you know. Totally. In, in, in Italy and, and in, in the United States, it's uh, a matter of how can it be so convenient. Oh, my gosh. That's so terrible, too. And it, it, it it's really That's is. why slow food originated in Torino. Yep. I mean, not that's a lot of people know that. Yeah. Granny's pudding <laughs> right now. Soon, soon, soon. And so as we have the hyper-local church here, what are you trying to do to connect to the community with these uh, great traveling flavors? Um, so I like to take, in the same way that Sean, who's coming up next, will tell you, I like to take really traditional Italian flavors, and then how can we source everything as local as possible? Loving it. I used to work at the grow house. I was the aquaponic farmer there for a while. Um, and that kind of got me all connected with all the restaurants and chefs in town. And that's kind of how this company started. I mean, I've been in the business since I was old enough to carry a bus tub. I love it. Well, it said you got your, your start as like a host. Can we get her the yeah. big torch? Oh, yeah. The big torch. <laughs> Where's the big Oh, there. It's right behind you. Is it really? Right behind All you right. down on the ground, babe. Can I torch one? You want to torch Mary? one? Yeah. Yeah, let me, heck yeah. Let me, get, let me torch one. You know, Greg usually comes to a party with his own torch. <laughs> uh, it's a strange thing. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. That uh, doesn't surprise minute, me about man. you. This took a, wait, how did we just <laughs> met? How do you know these things Oh, already? I can just tell. <laughs> My torch is ready. What am I torching and how do I torch it? All right, so we'll put, get it closer to you. And, put all, <laughs> and, and move <laughs> the alcohol away yeah, from it. Uh. <laughs> move the flammable things, maybe not next to your laptop. Right. And just kind of like go and that's going to be a lot of heat. So I back up from it. Back yeah. up, babe. There you go. What's wrong with that? You got it. Come you on, got Mario. it. There you that go. looks delicious. Who now? Me. I'd go go a little bit more. You still, oh, got, more, you still huh? got those sugar granules. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's perfect, right? There you go. Here, do mine. This one doesn't work as well. <laughs> now she wants my torch. That one's I, better. That one's I better. How it goes. There you go. With there you fire, go. bigger's That's always better, better right? Woo! Yes, baby. Yes. Nice. All right. You want my torch for that last one? Yeah. I want to see how the pros mm, are. Can you smell that little orange zest just coming right up out of there? Yeah, that's going to pair really nicely with the cocktail that Block Distillers got going for well, us. We have that right here. Oh, we yes. did. Do you? you well, you, right. Whoa. What? Oh, no, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got to hang out with them. We have the autumn oh, gin and tonic and the cocktails, summer gin and tonic. Have you tried those both, Greg, from Block tonight? I have not tried both. You have the rosy one. That is your autumn, autumn gin and tonic. That's right. And the other one's more citrusy, right? Is it? Yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't tried that one yet. Uh, Mariel, that's beautiful. Chef. Chef cook, you know. Cook. You like cook? Is that the term? Yeah, you like? I, I'm not a chef. I mean, that means a whole nother thing. Well, go ahead and erase that <laughs> off the board. <laughs> I said to Sean, I go, can I tell him to take that off? Is that weird? He's like, just leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. Not? Enjoy hey, it. Did you, did you know that you don't? Uh, look at this. Perfect. Oh, there we go. This is great. Oh, you drank it Are already. Are we going to pair why. this? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, hey, listen. Things happen. Hey, you know, it's, it's okay. What time is it? Oh, we have plenty of time to taste this and pair it. All right, so we're going to yeah, pair All we need is a spoon. That's it. Just a spoon. Can I we summon I'm attached, spoon? so I yes, can't go I, get it. I, I was going to go get it for you. <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to feed everybody. Here, let me, uh, Dave you, Avery, could you, could you give us a spoon? spoon from over oh, there? beautiful, beautiful. Spoons? Thank you. Thank you so much as you do that. How can people get a hold of you? Solicit your services. That's Solic uh, we have a website, www.anotedenver.com. Who's we? It's just me. <laughs> 
She has a I, mouse in her pocket. You know, I, it's, everybody says you got to say we for things. Really? It's just, it's just me. Well, you're part of the team. Yeah, you're part of the team. Yeah. You're I, one of us. I like the, the me thing. Thank ever. you. Yeah, Sean and I do a lot of events together, and, and moving forward, we're going to keep doing a lot of events together. Well, Sean's up next. Sean's up next. Can we call him Chef? I think he likes Chef. He is a chef. That's It's different. Yeah, it's different. Okay, we'll go with it. So tell us a secret. Tell us something that will just throw him way off when he's on next. About him? Yeah. You like, know anything? He only drinks tequila. Oh, is that right? Oh, We've I got like some that. great hyper. Oh, Ex except two days ago when we went to Block Distilling and he drank a bottle of gin. <laughs> Are you going to taste did, this Did with you us? notice, Greg, what she said? She didn't say a, a glass of gin. Yeah, she said a bottle. And um, that's when you know you have a real friend. Um, someone looking out for you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Don't worry, I drove him. Taste. I drove him. Yeah. What I know because what we here? found out about tonight about you is you're not drinking, and I admire that. I don't drink. Because yeah. it's tough. Um, Jay doesn't drink you, either. You know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Nice. I'm sober as a judge, only I'm miserable. You seem to enjoy it. I like it now. <laughs> I like it now. <laughs> it's been over a year, year so and a half, It's the minute. new high, right? Two, two and a half years for Jay. Wow. Heck yeah. Time is flying. Yeah. Being sober is the new high. It's a, it's a cool thing to do now. How would you introduce Sean Lauer? He doesn't know Put you're me talking about. Um, can you? he hear me? No. I no. mean, Sean is one of the most passionate, talented chefs I know. He's super invested in the local farming community and, and sourcing everything as local as possible. And in the same way, he takes South Korean flavors, sticks to super traditional flavor profiles, and then brings everything as local as possible. That was actually very, very good. I yes. should do this for a living. You should have me on more. Do that about yourself. <laughs> oh, I uh, don't make me do it about how myself. How would you describe yourself? I know it's tough. She's very modest, ahead. Jay. Well, uh, she, uh, Greg, she has a small torch, though. <laughs> we got to get her. Uh, that's your gift this year. When's your you're birthday? You're going to give me that? It uh, already passed. It did? Yeah, right. it did. Well, you're going to be using that torch for a few more months. That's okay. Then. That's all right. I can, I'll make it work a few more months. Well, yeah, I bet you could. All right. Uh, you won't do it? You won't talk uh, about yourself for I, a uh, I'm... So I used to be a farmer at the grow house, so farming is something that's really important to me, and I see the value in making sure that we're connected to our food and to our farmers. Um, and I think that's something that in Denver, it's really cool that that's not, we're not losing that. More and more chefs are very, very interested in knowing where their food comes from, having a relationship with their farmer, understanding how Mother Nature works and doesn't work sometimes. And, and kind of going with the flow in that aspect. And I, th I think that's what I try to do as much as possible. Hyper local. That is a great start. Yeah, yeah she, hyper local AF. She's farmed twice, though. A little bit about her. She was in Kansas actually working with some microgreen folks. Um, and check out her website, folks. AnoteDenver.com. Elevated plates without the anote? white tablecloth. A N. We'll oh. start there. O T T E, <laughs> o -T -T -E -A -N -O -T -T -E, Denver. O T T E Denver dot com. Dot Check com. her out our, on Instagram as well. Uh, Mariel Tenofrio Anote. You did a great job. You're just pushing these things out. People are going to eat these things up, and I commend you for uh, behaving yourself. I, did, I didn't the, curse uh, at all. I did you, so good. You did so good. It was because I wrote it. That's why. Oh, you wrote <laughs> on your hand, and you did Granny proud. I think so. She would have been cursing more than me. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. She's Italian. Yeah, Italian. <laughs> she's Italian. I'm from Italian, New Jersey. Right? All right, Chef Sean Lauer, he's up next. And uh, 7 o'clock, top of the hour, Councilwoman at Large, Debbie Ortega, will be right here on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Hello, Facebook family of the viewers of the Modern Eater. Look who we've got here. Oh my gosh, Debbie. She is council, council person at large, so she's over the whole shebang. That, that's tremendous, <laughs> tremendous, Debbie. Thanks for coming here. Thanks for yeah, coming here. Honored to be here. Now, the question that I have is, from the city, how, how collaborative now the city has become with restaurateurs, with food producers like myself. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of development activity that's going on in our city, and in all these new locations, we've got great restaurants that are coming in. Yes. We've got amazing chefs all around our city. Like Sean, yes. yes. Right? And so I think the city really recognizes the contribution that small businesses play. And, Boy, um, did you hit it on the head. Supported, right? This girl's good. <laughs> no wonder, no wonder. You're good. Well, keep an eye on us. Keep watching us because uh, Debbie's going to have her own segment. She's going to be talking for a good 15 minutes, uh, letting us know all the things that are happening. So for right now, we're going to take a break. Little Rich from the Modern Eater will be back in a flash. Great. 
thank you. That was awesome. Oh, bring it in. That was awesome. You, you, you took it right where it needed to go. With the best organic produce, I've been partnering with local and regional farms for the last 20 years, and our returning customers know they can count on us over and over again. 140 to the live. On Good Food 100, choose Growers Organic for their organic produce needs because we're experts at bridging the gap between the farm and the table. Join us in the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Yo, so I'm having problems with the uh, spots, the modern eater spots. Conserving our limited water supply. Did you know? So I'm at South River right now, and it's like not playing the spot. I have to like put it back in there and fade the old one out. It's 90% less. It is in the spot block, but they're not playing. More food. Using traditional farming techniques, farmers okay quantities of water leaving much of this water underutilized and just plain wasted. But because aquaponics is a... Yes, sir, 52 seconds. ...what the plants uptake and some very minor evaporation. South River Aquaponics has been running a 55,000-gallon system year-round for four years, and we use less than 500 gallons of water per day. Education is very important to us here at South River Aquaponics. I invite you to learn more about aquaponics at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. What? 30. Best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas. No, sir, it sounds great. Cold. I'm having problems on my end, but you guys sound good over there. What's my secret? Ardent milk. I'm trying. I'm trying. Quinoa, spelt, and more. Look. It's, it's, it's working. It'll be fine. Provides the industry's broadest range of traditional. 15 to the live. Customized blends and specialty products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love. Five, four, three. To your hot mills.com. Okay, back to the show momentarily, but Jeff Rourke in A Plus Beverage Solutions. You hear us talk about Jeff all the time. He's a family man, he's hyper local, and he puts in the best quality uh, tap systems you possibly could have, and he does maintenance too. More and more businesses need an A Plus report card on how they pour their beer. It's terrible to see. You go into an aging restaurant, an aging bar, and they're having trouble with their tap lines when it's an easy call to Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Foam, stale beer, no one needs that. Foam is money. If you're pouring no, inefficient it. beer, what are you doing, boys? You're pouring your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Don't pour your money down the drain. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. He'll make your dreams come true. If you want to add a line, you want to do maintenance, or if you're doing a build-out all together, get a hold of Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions, 720 272 3809 720 272 3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A Plus Beverage Solutions. All right, we'll just go back at it from the Modern Eater Show. Are we going to do a little open there, Jared? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, you're clear for a second. I don't know what the heck's going on. I'll figure it out. My bad. And it's time for In the Kitchen. All right, you're hot. All right, yes, indeedy, Mr. Tweedy. It is In the Kitchen as the sun sets on the Mile High City on this beautiful day after the bomb cyclone this week. Isn't should, it amazing uh, where we live? It, it is. You know, we get, we get a foot and a half of snow one day, the next. Time it's change. Clear. I'm yeah. all right. You feeling all right? No. A little no, song, yeah, a little, little dance, little a little seltzer down your pants at 7 o'clock. The top of the hour, council woman at large. Debbie Ortega is going to join us. But right now, he's in front of us. His name is Chef Sean Lauer. He's directing the kitchen right now as he gets ready to go on the show from Hop Alley and many, many other endeavors, yeah, man. I've got a couple things going on. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Guys. Yeah. There you are. Pull Thank that you. in just a little bit so everybody yeah. can hear those beautiful nice. dulcet tones. What, you have some delicious meat in front of you. Yeah, we uh, got some stuff from Parker Pastures here. Bill, who I believe spoke earlier, uh, he provides all this meat. We also work with JT and, uh, and, and them on the getting the beef. I use a lot of this stuff from them. Uh, we also have some pork jowl here today. Uh, I braised some of it, some of it's raw, being grilled. Uh, we also have some... He's commanding the kitchen right now, but I, want, I love it. I want to slow you down a little bit, Chef, because I have to tell you, we... we so, Mariel, who was just on the show. Yes. I said, how would you introduce Sean, right? 
She said so many kind words about you. <laughs> yeah, she, she really said, did. This gentleman is hyper local. He cares about his food. He cares about his sourcing. Very he much. cares about his ingredients. He cares about the food that he puts together, how he provides it, and the story behind it. And I have to tell you, you're everything within our ethos. And I have to welcome you to the show a little more formally. And we'll just slow down with that. That's good stuff, isn't Thanks it? Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. You go with that, right? Yeah. So, um, Mary and I use a lot of the local stuff. Um, we're doing pasture provisions. Actually, um, Bill's daughter raised the lamb rack that we're using right now. So How um, cool is that? Oh, uh, man, it's cool. Not, not to only have the, the ranchers that do it and the, the Ford, like 4-H program, stuff like that, people raising these animals themselves, being here, be, being able to taste it in it, and, uh, it's, it's so purest cool. forms. I, I got to believe Chloe is, what, 16 years Six, old? Just I 16, mean, yeah. Yeah, that's just awesome. It's really cool. That someone that young still cares about Oh, we got a little tequila well, for you. I heard you like it. We hear you like I, yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's Cheers. your fix? Or? Thanks yeah, for being definitely, on the show. Definitely. Here's the Cheers. In the Kitchen Cheers. segment. Cheers, Thank and you. I gotta, nice, nice if, having if me. Jay can show us behind, but we've utilized this. Did you enjoy this grill Incredible grill. in the I'm kitchen? A, yeah, it's amazing. And you didn't even know the, the functionality with the uh, rotisserie. With the rotisserie, yeah. Next we time. Known, we would definitely have yeah, a couple we of would I'll tell you, our boys at Proud Souls are doing it right, representing some great equipment out on the market. Great ingredients, great chef. Great equipment. The, the Heston over there, I don't Beautiful. know whether you use that or not either. No, no need today, but that thing is gorgeous for sure. But you and, and Hop Out, they got a good one in you, man. And uh, you landed at one of Tommy Lee's spots. Yep. And you've got some other things going on as well. I think folks know or should know about Hop Alley. But let's talk about you a bit. I'd like to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm working at Hop Alley now also with Marielle, who you saw earlier. Um, she's expanding uh, her catering company, Enote. Simon is the executive chef for that. Um, but one of the things we wanted to talk about as far as like Hop Alley and as far as these things are going, we, um, working with these farmers and ranchers is really hits home for me because I grew up in a smaller town in Colorado, northeast of Sterling a few miles, and it's all ranching and corn farming. There's, that's what everyone does. That's how everyone makes a living. And seeing their relationships with the animals and the produce and the things that they raise and grow and seeing the way that they treat it is almost no question as to how I'm hyper local and using all these local yeah. ingredients because you appreciate the amount of respect they put in no you know that you're getting no hormones no antibiotics all these things that that as a chef i would feel bad putting out as a product so it makes me proud to know that people that take pride in their work are we're using their their ingredients and their products and pushing out different different ethnicities of food for instance i work at a chinese restaurant we use corner post meats all the time local stuff to make Chinese food. We use um, Parker Pastures to make galbi and uh, pork jowl and all these Korean ingredients that we have, most of them Colorado grown. We get all of our lettuce and our greens from the grow house, all aquaponics farms. And so it's really cool to utilize those things in the neighborhood and uh, just keep it, like uh, I'm good friends with all these people here, so it's really cool to see and, and all interact and cooperate. We talked about it with Pasture Provisions and Parker Pastures earlier and I always, I always say, Brian, and, and, and we talk about this, is that what you're doing is non-conventional. Blows my mind. Should be totally conventional. Yeah. Should be everyday type of thing. Uh, you seem like a pretty esoteric, deep guy. Why do you figure we went away from what is conventional but now labeled non-conventional, and what do we do to circle that wagon? Um, I think that a lot of it has to do with convenience and um, consistency. You get something from Shamrock, you're getting the same thing over and over again. You don't know where the hell you got it or where you got it. But um, it's about consistency and just convenience. A lot of people get lazy and they want to just place an order for Shamrock. When you have to go and you might run out, like, for instance, when we go run corner post meets with uh, the bomb cyclone, that you can't get a delivery from them right now. Yep. How are you Adrian not and Daniel were in a spot Yeah, so that. it's, it's yeah. unfortunate, but that's, it just shows that, you know, it's really local and it's it's a good sign in my opinion. How do you not turn into that lo that um, that cost co uh, cost cutting um, corner cutting food whore? Well, I mean, the, how, how do you not approach that? There's a, there's a lot of things you can do to to reduce costs of certain things in your restaurant that can then add cost value to certain things that you want to get. If you want to get a more expensive piece of meat, you can cut costs in other other areas. But uh, to be honest, I feel like especially with as busy as Hop Alley is, we have a line out the door most of the time, a two-hour wait most of the time. I think people see that and they respect it more nowadays than they used to. 
it does people don't want to like consistency is huge for chefs we want to be consistent we don't want to have to 86 an item on the menu but if you explain to someone hey look our pork farmer couldn't leave their driveway because of the the hurricane or yeah. the blizzard yeah like we sorry we can't have that you think people are respectful and they understand that and and a lot of people want to believe in their chefs, though. Yeah. They, 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 they truly, you're going to a place and you expect that, that the corners aren't cut, that you're doing business with folks that are hyper-local. I got to tell you, my food tastes better when I know. Absolutely. It, yeah, it, well, this is the same, the Greg. Store. We were talking about it's transparency. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest movements, I think, as a food industry is about to experience. You want to know. Where did your food come from, and who is making it? Yeah. What are you going to butcher up? What are you doing here? All right, so we have some uh, short ribs. We're, right, today we're doing some galbi, which is uh, Korean marinated short ribs. It's like a sweet soy, sesame, a little rice syrup. So it's along the side lines of like sweet and salty kind of a thing. These short ribs we got from Pasture, uh, pasture Parkers, Parker Pasture, sorry, uh, Bill, and then provided them for us. But uh, I'm just going to show you how I butterfly the, the short rib today. Please. So we get like a, a good like inch and a half. Sometimes you can get up to three, but these are no hormones. These are grass-fed raised beef, so really good quality. What we do is we flip the bone over, and you're going to cut into it this way. And when you get to right there, you're going to flip it over so and then cut Facebook from this side friends, again. So our friends, you're enjoying this on iHeartRadio. Give a little description of kind of how you're butterflying this delicious piece of meat. Yeah, yeah so short rib nice is what it is. Like that. Yeah, this is a short rib. Uh, bone in. In, the, in my hometown, we have a... a meat processing plant called DNL Meats, and they call these country-style ribs is what they would consider them. But you get longer bones, and then these are halved. So you're just going to follow the bone really close until you get that bone detached. And that helps keep it together on the grill. And then flip it over. You're going to go this way until just about right there. And then flip it over again. And then now you have another section that you can cut and butterfly. Look at that. That's great. And, and how awesome is it when you're working with this food right here that you know where it came from? You oh, know it's really cool. I mean, especially with the, for instance, the, lamb, the rack of lamb that we have today, like having Chloe raise those lambs in. Off it, that's, the hook. Yeah. You She's can't right get behind you. She's right there. I thought we should have <laughs> Chloe over here. Get, uh, can we get Chloe? Let's, Good. Let's Thank get you. Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. D Dave's on it. Live radio. Oh, we only have about a minute to go with right. that. Just wanted to get Chloe on. I want to thank you before Chloe gets on here because Thanks, uh, I appreciate it. Um, it. You did a great job tonight, yeah. uh, Chef Sean Lauer. Thanks, guys. And uh, Hop Alley. And it, Instagram is what? I, I wrote it down earlier. Spill Clinton 303. Spill Clinton. Well, because his nickname was Spills. Spills, that's the nickname. That was his nickname, which we just found out from <laughs> one of our viewers. Chloe, yeah. we wanted to talk about pasture provisions. How cool is it? Here's the chef. This is the final product. We get to enjoy this right here. And this is something that came from you and your heart and raising it with your family. Yeah, it's amazing and it tasted really great and Thank it's you. always amazing to see the end product from the start to the beginning hyper local at its finest thank you so much Thanks, this is thank so you. cool top of the hour councilwoman at large so much. her name's debbie ortega she's up next with my old time friend he's a player thank in the you. city his name's kyle zeppelin and zeppelin development we're going to do the second hour coming up next on the modern eater show on i Heart radio what do you think family here we are we broke a little early but we're going to make this a great one i'm going to put i'm going to pull someone completely out of the audience jared come on in brother come on in uh, doing great i'm going to give you this mic so i'm going to actually turn it on this time i'm horrible at that and i'm going to have you hold it pretty close to your mouth sure now here's what we want to do i want to talk about hyper local we got about five minutes okay so when that says 500 we're going to need to dump out of it about then. Okay. But I wanted to talk to you about Hyper Local, especially because you're relatively new to Denver. Yep. You're a transplanted Chicagoan, and you were kicking it over there, came over here. What, what did you find different? What did you find that you liked on Hyper Local? Tell us a little bit about, have we helped you? Yeah, you know, uh, the, the Denver food scene is growing. In Chicago, there's a lot of stuff, like everything's been done, and the restaurant market's so saturated there. Denver, there's a lot of room for growth, so that's exciting. We're, we've opened three spots here now, the Bud Long Hot Chicken in Zeppelin Station, Ofu Smoked Meats in Zeppelin Station, and then AJ's Pit Barbecue over in the Overland neighborhood. So, you know, and our feedback so far has been great from our customers and just that they like what we're doing, and uh, Denver's ripe for a lot of really great concepts, and we're happy to be part of it. Well, I think, you know, what I found interesting is, first off, how, how exceptional your food is. I mean, 
uh, obviously in Chicago. To make it in Chicago, you've got to be good, and this guy's good. So go to his place. Thank you. Um, your barbecue, the pickles. Here's what I found amazing. Bud Long has really been your successful driver in Chicago, correct? Correct, yep. And when you moved here, you that was your third yeah. a, a identity, third restaurant. You started with Ofu, yep. and then AJ's, yep. and then Bud Long. I'm curious why the reversal on that? I would have thought you'd open with that with that winner out of the gate. Yeah, no, good question. So uh, Zeppelin Station was designed to have a lot of international flair to it. So they wanted us yes. to have an international themed restaurant. So that was Ofu, Montreal Smoked Meats, which is like my wife's Canadian heritage combined with my love for Texas style barbecue. Ah. So that was, that was what brought us here. Then when we decided to stay, I said, well, let's do more projects. And smoked meat barbecue has always been, that's what I started with. So yes, Bud Long has been the driving force in, in terms of having multiples, but I'll always have a barbecue restaurant where I live and I'll always work the board. I'll always load the smoker. Like that's just what I like to do. So. Well, and your barbecue is incredible. I mean, you know what I, what I look for is an experience, a dining experience. And truly down at AJ's, you offer that. I mean, I've been there where you're talking about the different types of barbecue. Oh, this comes out of the Carolinas, this comes out of Texas. I mean, you give people an experience and an education, and I have to say some good food. It's incredible. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, barbecue has so much history, and for me, when I serve food, half of it is the flavor, but half of it is the story. You know, I want people to know why it is the way that it is and where it came from, because that's really interesting to me, you know? Food, uh, culture, I mean, food all over the world is all founded in stories, whether it's Mexican food in Central Mexico, uh -huh, yep. or Tex-Mex in Texas, or California Baja surf style food, or barbecue. Every All food has stories, and barbecue is what I latched onto, it's what I love, and so I've spent a lot of time researching and traveling and talking to the historians and the people who really invented that style of cooking. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an American, and so American uh, barbecue is the only food Americans invented. The only food, pizza, pasta, hamburgers. We didn't invent any of that. We've taken it on as our own. But barbecue is truly the most American food you can find because it's it's the way that we raise our animals, the type mm -hmm. of pigs that we breed, mm -hmm. the feed that they eat, the gland that they're raised on, and then the type of wood that we cook. You will not find slow smoke barbecue, American barbecue, like we serve anywhere in the world. Interesting. So, well, you know, so phenomenal. And your me. pickles. You got a business there just with your pickles. Thank you. I ate damn near a jar when I was down there last time. I hate to admit it, but damn near ate a jar. Well, you know, the pickles, the Budlong chicken, the story of that is the Budlong family was a farming family in Chicago that grew cucumbers and sold pickles in a pickling store. And we serve pickles on our fried chicken because that's traditional Nashville hot chicken. Mm -hmm. So it was important for us to have a really good balanced pickle that's not too sweet, not too sour, not too mushy, not too crunchy. Really an all-around well-balanced pickle. And I know whether you like dill or sweet and sour or bread and butter, uh, those pickles are a blend of all of that. And so we get a lot of people who are like, you know, I don't even like sweet and sour pickles or dill pickles, but I like these pickles. And it's because it's not one of those specific. It's kind of a little bit from each of those styles of pickles. It's a good pickle. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's, that's incredible. Now, I'm going to ask you another question about Bud Long because I went down there uh, when you open that, uh, when you open it up, I think Biker Jim was customer number one and yep. I was two or maybe he was two and I was three. It was amazing all the boxes when we went to the food court and we're seeing box after box after box all over the place. It was incredible. It's fun. It's been fun to see and it's fun, you know, it's fun to see people enjoying your food. That's why we do this. Well, it's it's amazing. So what what is next that you can say, that you can talk about? We don't want to give away any secrets. Uh, what's next? My family. You know, we're established here now and I have three restaurants open. I, I don't know that I'm going to be overly ambitious here for the next year and I really just I, I love my family. I want to spend a lot of time with my kids. I needed to get the three places open here to justify my day, like to do something during the day. I need, uh, I, you know, I, I like to be busy. So now I have three restaurants open and we'll focus on fine tuning them and some might pop up, but nothing's on the immediate radar uh, other than spending time with my family and running the businesses we open. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. And then even watching with your kids because they're so young, right? It, it's important to spend that time with them now. Absolutely. Because yeah. you, you don't get it back. Yeah, and what's the point of any of it without your family and your, you know, what, what, what you believe in? So. Well, that's what we do it for. Right, right. Man, a tip of the sombrero. This guy is just unbelievable. And I have to tell everyone about a story on You Saved Us. Is that one day I walk in here on a Saturday about 3 o'clock to start setting things up, and I hear water shooting all over the place, and our sink broke. And we're, I'm like, what are we going to do? We're going to be on air in like an hour and a half and, and not knowing what to do. You left AJ's 
with a, a Home Depot bucket of tools, you came down here, helped us, got us fixed, got it up and running. Nobody here that night even knew it happened. No, that's, you know. And I'm going to tell you, your family here will be forever grateful for you. Thank you so much. It was it, you saved us. I'm happy to help. Big. Big time. Happy to help out. So if you if, if you're a barbecue fan, if you're a Nashville chicken, and that's got some heat, baby. Yep. I ordered the mild, the mild, and it, it would have some heat. So no, that was that was just awesome. That was awesome. Well, we're gonna send it back to our Facebook family and uh, thanks. Go see Jared, go eat his food. AJ's pit barbecue, Bud Long Hot Chicken <laughs> and Ofu. Thanks, Thank Rich. You, brother. Thank you. Ask Alexa to play 630 KHOW on iHeartRadio. Then you can hear Tom Martino get you the help you need. Weekdays 10 to 1. Getting 630 KHOW from iHeartRadio. If Denver's talking about it, you'll hear it on 630 KHOW. The following is a paid advertisement. The opinions, viewpoints, and promises made during the following program are not those of KHOW, its staff, management, or parent company, iHeartMedia Incorporated. Jared's getting the open. I don't know what the heck is going on. I think it's playing right off the bat. Oh, you're good. You're hot right now. Four. Here's to a meal we're all here for. Delicious and tasty. Now we're getting to the good stuff. With your hosts, Greg Hollenbeck, Jay Parker, and Brian Freeman. You better believe it. Live radio at its finest right here from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. It is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks for joining us for hour number two. And uh, Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, Jay Parker doing his God's work on the uh, Facebook Live right now. And uh, Davery just uh, getting ready to go for the rest of the evening. As we go on that downslide, this is good times because uh, here's a treat for us. Councilwoman at large, Debbie Ortega, joins us here on the Modern Eater Show. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Can I call here. you, Debbie? Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, from Kamal and Taxi, uh, Slavica Park, welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Happy to be here. Thank oh, this, you. This can be a fun conversation. And uh, here's a longtime friend of mine. This is a long time coming, actually. I'll tell you a couple of stories as we, we go along. Oh, oh, they're, 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 the, the they're so good. I grew up with this gentleman. I can call him my friend. We're BFF for, for life. He's the two and only. His name's Mr. Kyle Zeppelin. Welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's good stuff. I mean, where do we begin? It's just like uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's, you have an illustrious history here in Colorado, and I can go down uh, your cre credentials there, uh, Councilwoman, but um, uh, why don't you talk about yourself for just a second? Give these folks in our hyper-local community a sense of who, who you are, and then I'll tell what you mean to Denver. Okay. So besides the fact that I'm a coal miner's daughter, um, grew up in New Mexico, have been here since I was 13. Um, well, we'll give you my... credit because you're right on the border in Raton. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. um, I've spent my entire adult life working in the public arena, um, either, either as an elected official or working for elected officials. And um, the, the issue of the role that our small businesses play in the city is so important because they put so many people to work. And our restaurants, obviously, are part of those small businesses. And um, I know we're having conversations now about the minimum wage increase, but I've worked with Slavica and with Kyle on different projects in our city, and we've got some amazing things happening. You know, we just passed in November a fifth, um, $11 million healthy food initiative that will make sure that kids uh, throughout our school district don't go home hungry on the weekends and that they're getting healthy food. Um, I'll let Slavica talk about the, the program that she's part of, but there are some amazing things happening. For example, National Western's talking about doing a public market, yeah. and there's this Sun Valley Food Hub that's I, being we're, talked we're about. We're going to dig into that, and I just want to pause for a minute because I talk about hyper-local, and I talk about our community, and I talk about the obligation of the fine men and women that are within our community that this hyper-local, it's just not a notion. It should be a way of life. It should be an obligation to you that if there's somebody that has a, a that's a person, a product, or a service, they're within your community and it's something that you could use. And it's an obligation for you to source that product. 
uh, don't be so lazy to just uh, sit around and, and wait for things to come for you because we really can make a difference. I was in politi politics for many, many years in talk radio, about 15, to the point to where I had to put it down and get into food and beverage of something I very much so love. But here I am as I circle the wagon back into politics. Food and politics, how do they mix? Well, you can't That's give a any great event question, without by the way. good food, right? <laughs> Every, every event includes great food. But we're talking about children, and we're talking yes. about nourishment, and we're talking yes. about going home hungry, should Absolutely. you or should you not. It's something that, as, as we're in an urban community, there shouldn't be one child right. that's left behind or, or goes without Agreed. to where we have our means that are so great. Right. And a lot of the businesses that we work with, and I commend Brian Freeman from Growers Organic, who's a great community business, and, and Little Rich Schneider from Rockalitas Tortillas, these are all guys that uh, really supporting them as we went through the bomb cyclone this week. Yes. That was a difficult proposition to where your lights were turned off for a couple of yeah. days. Here you have perishable items, but there are folks that need those items. And as we go into the future, and I have to tell you, Mr. Kyle Zeppelin, I've watched a lot of great things out of you, sir. And these things is uh, urban development and keeping the community in mind and the folks that, because we really saw the drum. We are local boys. We saw Cherry Creek before it was Cherry Creek. It was World War II pop-up houses when we were being ruffians running around that neighborhood. But we saw these communities develop. We, we got to know the people in our communities. And what you and your father have done has really been great work for our community. And it all ties in. And it's going to make sense to you as we further this conversation and kick the rock down the road. But it's not an easy proposition. You have a lot of different working angles when it comes to development, don't you, Kyle? It's come a long way. As, uh, you know, small businesses are under fire right now with taxes and uh, cost cost of wages, and just you know, it's fine for us real estate guys. It's been a great run, uh, but still got to mind people at, at the grassroots level. So when we look at the future, because really that's what we have to look at, right? What's our future? And uh, Kyle and I joke, why aren't you running for mayor? <laughs> Seriously. I, I mean, there's a lot of folks that, y y y right, Kyle? The time is right for a woman to be mayor. It's <laughs> and the right woman. We, we've had our turn, and we know how that turned out. So it's the, the path is clear. So we look at that. How do we allocate money? And uh, I was looking at some numbers, 10% of um, utilizing our local services. How do you implement that? Well, you know, it's, it's a matter of setting priorities. And one of the things I think is important to always keep in sight is that we, we have to deliver our basic services that taxpayers believe that their taxes pay for before we keep adding on a lot of new programs. Um, we have new monies that we didn't have before with marijuana dollars and um, we've debruced, and so I think it's a matter of taking a step back every so often and looking at those priorities and looking at not continuing to fund pet projects from previous mayors that don't continue to make sense. So it's looking at how do we, how do we balance that and, and meet the needs of people who have been left behind that have not been um, able to afford the cost of living in our city right Debbie, now. Debbie, I'm, I'm, this is Brian Freeman, I'm, and I'm a little ignorant to politics and all that, Tell me, how do we get so far down the road? And it seems like all those pet projects that you spoke about, they just keep getting added on and added on. They never, they never sunset. What, what could we ever do to make some of those pet projects sunset? Awareness, right? So, so it's awareness, but it's also a matter of having a council and a mayor that work together to go back and, and look at those programs and look at what we no longer need to continue to cover as far as you know our, our city general fund budget and um it's it's a matter of willpower you know wanting to make sure that we're, we're able to do that and sometimes it's a matter of elected officials um council members just putting something on the table that really kind of forces the issue to make sure we're having that conversation will somebody ever do a reset Will someone ever pull the handle we, and we've say? We've done that on a number of a yeah. number of pieces of legislation that have come forward. So let's okay. take a pause. That's the voice of Debbie Ortega. She's councilwoman at large. Uh, first of all, De Debbie, call you Debbie, right? 
I, I, so I'm looking, I'm like, what's the proper turn? I want to be PC. I want to make, it's like council member is what I came up again. with. Yeah. Uh, council member, why is it important to have council woman to you? I know it's why it's important to me. Yeah. I've worked for, I've worked for my mom for years. I've worked for many strong women. I think the recognition inside of a name that, that uh, watering it down with council member just doesn't do it justice. Yeah. So that's my answer. Yeah. Uh, didn't want to put you on the spot for that, but uh, I think you've done a lot of great stuff for our community. Um, I, ha I, I haven't I met you before, yeah. but um, we'll talk about re-election. We'll talk about elections. We'll talk about the stuff that really matters. And as we broke away from you talking about, well, what's our future? We have a great thing that's going to be coming up as far as food and food sourcing and availability to our folks here in an urban environment. I'm an urban farmer. You kind of are too, Kyle, right? I have a the black thumb. <laughs> you do? I'm, I'm a gardener. Uh, Mr. Kyle Zeppelin, <laughs> Kyle, you're going to stick around with us for the entire hour, but we're going to continue next with these gals and uh, Councilwoman at large, Debbie Ortega, along with uh, Slots of uh, Slots. Of, ah, my God, I'm terrible under pressure. <laughs> it's Slavica. 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 Uh, park. Uh, I like it. Come on, and taxi. We'll continue. We'll take that break. We'll be right back from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. You are listening to the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Excuse me, sir. Thank you, Greg. And welcome our Facebook family. We're going to take a minute here and talk to Marielle. We're going to talk a little bit about innovation. And as we're heading into spring and summer, yes, yes. and then you've got some wild catering things, what, what are some of the dishes that you're known for that maybe other people can't pull off like you? So something we do is we work with a lot of local farmers and we get to uh, first dibs on microgreens. And since I have farmed before, I know what's in the seed catalog. Okay, now we'll try that and again. Try that again. So, since uh, I used to be a farmer, I know kind of all the ins and outs of what microgreens are really cool, what unique things we can find, and then we have such good relationships with our farmers that I can be like, hey, can you seed this for me and get something seeded, especially for us that we're the only people that get to use it. L listeners, she's beautiful and smart, and she can make <laughs> some incredible food. The perfect guest, you need to come back and see us again. <laughs> anytime, anytime. So what do you think of this madness? It's fun, isn't it? I love it. It was a good time. Thanks. I'm nervous. But I it's know, good. I know, no, you did great. <laughs> Thanks so much. We're gonna send it away. Little Rich and the Modern Eater will be right back. Download the app to try it for free. That's babble.com. Hi, I'm Charlie Gottenkenny, brewmaster at Brews Beers, where Denver's best selection of badass Belgian style beers is waiting for you. Brews is in high gear this winter with some serious badassery coming down the pipe. The infamous Hellraiser is on tap, along with Atlas Quadruple, Talus, and Trident Triples, and our 135. We're celebrating Stout Month with our Belgian style Onyx, Toasted Oat. Yeah, 135, 130, 125 now. Dare Imperial IPA, Hibiscus Saison. 120. Double and a limited bottle edition of our Brett Saison Farmstead Funk. Check out all our beers on our website, along with daily food trucks and more, at brewsbeers.com. That's brews, spelled B-R-U-Z, 1675 West 67th Avenue in Denver, where your dog is always welcome. Join us soon for some Belgian-style badassery. Rocker Spirits. It's a distillery. It's a place to hang. It's about quality. It's about taste. It's about passion. Infused with American spirit. Rocker whiskey, rocker rum, rocker vodka. Get ready for an original look, feel, and experience. Old Town Littleton. And if you get hungry while you're sipping on some drinks, they've got the best food truck line in town. Open Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Rockerspirits.com. Rockerspirits.com. Hey, it's Chef Elon Wenzel, owner of Element Knife Company. If you cook, then you'll know the importance of a quality knife and proper care. My training in Japan exposed me to exceptional cutlery. That's why I am so excited to offer you the knives I fell in love with. Element Knife Company is chef-driven, and my goal is to support and educate. Get at me for a knife clinic or conversation. Find me at elementknife.com or by simply calling 303-460-468 for the best knives in your kitchen. Coming back right here. Element Knife Company.
Hi, I'm Charlie Gottenkenny. We all love Belgian beer. Brewmaster at Brews Beers. What the f***'s wrong with you? <laughs> You're listening to the Modern Eater on iHeartRadio. Yes, you are. This is a fun conversation. I wish you could hear uh, off the air as much as you do on the air. But Greg Holland back and Brian Freeman. We continue from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. And uh, very special guests right now on the show. And uh, Councilwoman at large, Debbie Ortega. And uh, uh, Slots of uh, slots of uh, Park. Uh, Kamal Taxi. I'll get it. Do, do you have a nickname? Slava. Slava? Yes. Done. All right. <laughs> Slava done. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, projects. Projects that are coming up. Zeppelin, Kyle Zeppelin here with us as well. Anything cool? Can we get some insight? Anything? Should we start with who should we start with? Well, I'll give you the, the 5,000 foot level. Yes. So um, we've got this effort that is underway in the Sun Valley neighborhood called the Food Hub. And uh, one of our local foodies, Adam Schlegel, um, Susan Powers, sure. there's a number of people. Where is Sun, Sun Valley? Sun Valley is the neighborhood just immediately south of Mile High Stadium. Yep. Uh, Denver Housing Authority owns some public housing there, and all of that neighborhood is going to be It's actually just north of 6th Avenue right here in between Stone. Colfax yes. and 6th right. Avenue right off of I-25. Yeah, there, and folks. it's east of Federal. And what's the project? Can you tell um, some secrets? It's, it's called the Food Hub, and okay. what they're talking about is having kind of a warehouse-style facility that a lot of our um, farmers can bring their stuff to, uh, and and they're looking at having a kitchen there. Um, Slavica may, may be a little bit more familiar with it than I am, but there's a natural tie-in between that and the public market that is scheduled to be at the old 1909 building on the National Western site. It's okay. the oldest arena building on the National Western site. Why is this important, Slava? It's important for many reasons. I mean, first and foremost, it's at, um, sourcing locally. It's, it's obviously extremely important. Also ensuring that everybody has access to affordable and healthy foods. Good food. You know, good food, not just any food, not, you know, so... Um, and from my perspective, it's running social enterprises and uh, teaching skills to the low-income community that will prepare them for some of these jobs. How does that antiquate to the business models? Because you always follow the money, and it costs money to buy these great, delicious, locally sourced foods because, Brian, we know there's margins to meet. Yep. Mm -hmm. how, how is that going to be done? Um, I, I really believe you can do both. You can run a social enterprise and also be sustainable. Uh, if the model is done right. Uh, I also believe that more than anything, it is important to actually pay the community and teach them the skills that they need. One of the projects we're going to be doing is um, launching a teaching farm in our neighborhood on an acre, and participants will be paid while they are learning how to farm. And great idea is I always say it's, it's like, let's make agriculture sexy again. Let's, let's bring it back to our neighborhoods. Hallelujah. Yes. And, and as well should be, because it is. I mean, when you hear the stories, when you meet the families, and I always say that I'd rather put a pair of ballerina shoes on a local business family's uh, daughter than put another boat in a huge corporation's yacht lot. That That's very meaningful. How does the government go into play with that, Debbie? Well, again, we uh, passed this $11 million, the, the voters actually passed this $11 million healthy food fund that's going to be looking at how to partner with some of our local programs and projects. And um, I think there is some discussion about looking at this food hub being a natural link to making sure that we have healthy foods in our low-income communities. The neighborhood Slavica talked about is the Swansea neighborhood along the I-70 corridor that's being impacted by, you know, the I-70 construction where some of the neighbors have lost their homes because of that project. Mm -hmm. So making sure that we have opportunities for people to, you know, own and run a small business and eventually be one of those businesses at the public market right in their neighborhood are, are some of those natural connections that we're trying to make here. So as we're talking from 50,000 feet from a lot of these projects, and I have to go to you, Kyle, um, you look at projects and you look at the city and you look at other cities, the models of that. Do you see other cities and, and is Seattle something that we're trying to model? So, where, where are we getting these types of inspirations from, Kyle? 
I mean, I think you have major cities all over the country, all over the world that are doing significant. Everyone likes to eat and drink. So, uh, you know, there's fortunately people at the community level that are taking the individual initiative to make these to make this happen. And then you have uh, political representatives like the councilwoman um, that are supporting these initiatives and turning them turning them into reality. And you know, in a uh, much maybe less significant way at the with some of these developments, we're trying to do our part. Um, so we're doing a full reboot of the source right now. Um, includes a common area bar, juice bar. Uh, that uh, we're refreshing all the furnishings. Um, so you'll see that come online over the next few weeks. Uh, there's some additional retail going in there. Same thing for Zeppelin Station. Um, creating opportunities for small local businesses. Um, with what Jared's doing with Bud Long, um, he's packing them in. Has a has a significant line every day at lunch. Um, and then uh, you have La Doña Tacos that um, pretty much can't go wrong there with, with uh, the, the newer lineup at Zeppelin Station. And well, smoke. And a natural tie-in to yeah. the Kamal program is, is one that Slavi says should probably talk about. I would love being. for you to talk about Kamal because if folks don't know this program, they have to hear it right now, Slava. Uh, yes, and I actually do want to say that Kyle is being really humble and not talking about yeah, his for involvement. For the first time. And not talking about his involvement with Kamal. Kamal is actually a partnership between all three, between the city, because we did get some funding for that, between our nonprofit Focus Points, and obviously between um, Zeppel and Development. We couldn't have done it without them. It is a program that helps uh, women from um, Global Illyria Swansea gain the skills that they need to launch their own businesses uh, in the food industry or learn the skills that they need to actually get employed in some other restaurants and also provides them with an autom I mean, instant economic um, mobility because they're paid while they're working there. In addition to all of that, we are really helping preserve some of the different heritage through the cuisine of many different cultures that make um, the fabric of the city. So we have women from Mexico, from Syria, from Ethiopia, from Afghanistan, and are always looking into expanding. That's Slava, are you, are you doing anything with the grow house over in that neighborhood there? Absolutely. We are actually sourcing some of the food from them. And uh, this farm that I mentioned that I brought up, Huerta Urbana, that we will be launching, we are doing that in partnership with the grow house. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you look at these things and you say, well, how can I be involved? How can I support? Um, there, there are many ways, first of all, uh, to get involved in these type of programs. Um, so Councilwoman Debbie Ortega, kind of cool to back these things because this is undeniable, right? Absolutely. I mean, you're not trying to push through, uh, diff you know, red flag bills and uh, do right. the... Uh, these are things that um, are very palatable and, and I think are very achievable. And when you get the like minds of you guys together, and Slava and Debbie and Kyle, um, we can achieve these things. And, and there's no reason why. I believe that uh, you look at uh, the world. It's a rough world out there. You look at the United States, it gets a little better. You look at Colorado, it gets real good. You look at Denver, we're all blessed. Yes, we are. Le and, and let's spread that. Debbie, uh, how do we keep you around for longer? Is it elections? You got to vote for her. <laughs> so we've got That's a, a start. <laughs> a May 7th election. I'm up for re-election. This will be my last term that I can run. Not sure what I'm going to do after that. But, I got a uh, job. <laughs> uh, let's do some food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so just want to encourage people to, you know, turn in their ballots. They, they will come out on April 15th. Yeah. So anybody that lives in Denver will have an opportunity to vote. And um, You are Denver. Yeah, thanks. You really are. Appreciate you. Thank you. All that you've done for many years. And I look at the culinary industry. I look at the servitude that these folks feel um, to be able to provide things for people to every day to wake up on holidays, days off, to be able to go in and just because it's inbred in their DNA to go and put a smile on somebody's face. You've done that for many years many years Thank and you. my hat's off to you for that servitude feeling as well Thank you. i love what i do thank you there it is you're not off the hook young man uh you guys are gonna have to watch this facebook live later we will. because zeppelin and i have some business to do on the air i'm gonna give you a little tease back when we were kids we were 12 years old probably 12 years old and we got a boom box 
right? A boombox with a double cassette recorder. And we would rush home from school. We went to Hill by Steck off of Colorado Boulevard. And we'd rush home to this boom box with a little, some microphones, and we were, would record a show like it was radio. <laughs> it was my passion. I fell in love with it. He went on to bigger and better things. I'm still chasing a dream. But we're all boys here, right here from Denver, Colorado. And uh, all's well in the world as we continue with a couple of great things. And, and Rhino, man, Kyle, we could spend two hours together on a show. Talk about this city, how we've grown up, what we've done. Um, but I appreciate all the things you've done for this city. I can't as believe well. it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen next when Spangling Brewery joins us and uh, also Block Distilling. They'll be up next. Thank you, ladies, so much. Slava. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank and, you so uh, much, thank Greg. You, ladies. Brian. Thank you. Debbie, thank you so much. Councilwoman at large and uh, many, many. One more turn. Just one more. One more night. That was a note. A note means one more night. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. All right, we'll take a break. We'll go to Little Rich right now. This is the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Facebook family, viewers on Facebook, for viewers of the Modern Eater, we got another interview. We got another segment here. I got a, a virtual stud here. Kyle, come on over here. Kyle, come on over. <clears throat> now, normally I would have talked about education. Thanks for coming over here. I'm going to give you the mic. Oh, Hold them, right? Perfect, perfect. Now, normally I would be talking about education, but I'm not that smart. So let's talk about innovation, because that's something you have done. Share with us a little bit, and we got about 30 seconds on innovation, baby. Uh, we try to do our part to do some unique things that aren't otherwise happening in the community. Rhino is kind of a good platform for that, because it's a We're undeveloped baby. former industrial area that's just screaming out to be part of the solution for some of these things. Amazing foresight. And this is, it's one thing to have foresight and say, okay, I'm going to do this. It's another to execute it as well as you have. It's ongoing. So we did the first urban market hall in Denver, which was the source. Um, it's continuing to improve, but the key to all of it is to stay involved and support all those local businesses. And um, it's not just like you launch these things and they work forever. You got to keep tuning them up and finding ways to support people. You've done a great job. You've got a, a, done a great job. And also, I want to throw in one more thing. Happy birthday to your dad. Look in there. Say happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, Mickey Zeppelin. Thanks, Modern Eater. We'll be right back. The ingredients. That's why in 2013, I left the fine dining industry to start a sustainable organic farm. At South River Aquaponics Alpha Glow, we are the leader in sustainable growing practices, utilizing our natural resources as effectively as possible. No pesticides, no GMOs, no funny business, just clean, honest food production. We use old world techniques combined with modern technology to bring you the best possible produce. Our gourmet mushroom facility provides CO2 for our greenhouse that grows tilapia as well as lettuces and herbs in our aquaponics system. Look for us in natural grocers, city market, and served on the plates of Colorado's finest chefs. At South River Aquaponics Alp and Glow Mushrooms, we're growing greener. To learn more about aquaponics and see our products, go to our website at southriveraquaponics.com. South River Aquaponics, the future of farming. My dad's vegetables are so good, I can't live without them. Hey, Colorado chefs, Brian Freeman with Growers Organic and the Modern Eater Talk Show. Do you care about where your food comes from? I do. Do you want loyalty from customers who care about that as well? I can help by providing top quality organic produce with reliable delivery, knowledgeable sales team who genuinely care about how food is grown, transported, and served. Chefs, Growers Organic will ensure you have excellent ingredients for your next James Beard dinner, your nightly specials, or your regular menu items. Join the organic revolution and go organic with Growers Organic. Look us up online at growersorganic.com. Hey, chef friends, it's Little Rich here from Rockalita's Tortillas. Rockalita's, known for hyper-local, innovative, and healthy tortillas and chips, served by Colorado's top chefs, and that's why we only use Colorado Mills sunflower oil. If you, too, want to serve the healthiest, most vibrant-tasting foods, you must use Colorado Mills. Colorado Mills is hyper-local, Colorado-grown, cold-pressed in Lamar, Colorado. Whether you bake, fry, or saute, get your Colorado Mills today. Available through Shamrock, Growers Organic, and Don Foods. For the best oil in the business, use Colorado Mills. My name is Alex Seidel. I'm from Fruition Restaurant, Mercantile Restaurant. You are listening to us on Modern Eater on... You're up. Radio. 
All right, hosting this hour, Greg Hollenbach, Brian Freeman, and Kyle Zeppelin. My bro from another hoe. <laughs> What's up, man? It's so good to have him here. And uh, Spangalang and Brews uh, Brewery. Uh, Charlie Gotten Kenny, everybody knows these beautiful dulce tones. Open them up. Open those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good to be here. It is good to be here. And Taylor Reese, how are you from Spangalang? Doing well. Thank you for having us. Uh, everybody at this table, everybody here loves libations. Kyle, you've got quite the liquor cabinet. Still trying to keep up with it. But, yeah, there's new stuff coming out all the time. It keeps getting better. You ready to try some stuff? Absolutely. What do you know about Spangalang? We go back a while. I remember when they launched the brewery, it was just an idea, and they made it happen. Yeah. Is it that easy? Come on, Charlie. It's not oh, yeah, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> Super easy. You get so rich yeah. the first year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you just sit, They're like you the first three years, right? It's just yeah. easy. It's a walk in the park. Yeah, you just, everyone, yeah. you just make it, and everyone runs to it. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, one brewery in Rhino, one brewery in Midtown. But where's Midtown? Every Midtown is up on uh, Pecos at around 67th Avenue. And it's a, you know, a new development up there, and we're kind of, uh, right as you turn in, there we are. Zeppelin, how come you didn't get your hands on Midtown? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? In multiple places, <laughs> but not everybody wants us. When we grew up, that was Commerce City, wasn't it? Um, no, 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 no. It's actually a little uh, west. Denver. Yeah, it's a little, it's, you'd be surprised. I've, I've been over at Charlie's place, and the views that he has of downtown, you'd never think that they existed at 68th and Pecos right there. Did you know there was a beer festival today? I did. You did what beer festival? Collaboration fest. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Were you nice, there? Kyle? I was not. Are there. you a beer guy? There. You like like uh, Montucky. Um, I, I'm I throwing like you some, under the bus. I like some cheap beer and I like some sour beer. So kind of got a lot of bases <laughs> covered. All right, brewer guys, how do you do that? How do you t turn on new flavors to a guy that likes a, a traditional sense of beer? How do you do that? Well, you, you start out giving him something that's not radically different from what he's used to. So when people come in and say, well, you know, I like Coors or whatever, fine. You know, try this blonde ale, which is similar but better. And people think, whoa, wow, well, you know, and then they're ready for next time for a triple. Now, your taste buds, Kyle, I mean, I, I'd have to, I admire your taste buds and what that is. But to get into some darker stouts, so did we drink Guinness growing up? I think we drank a little bit of that. We probably tested everything. We tested a lot of things. So. <laughs> we did. So what are we going to test here? Let's just go down the row. Uh, this is your collab beer? So, yeah, we had uh, two collab beers out of the same batch. One is called Serenite, and it's a Belgian-style quadruple, or Grand Cru, as they call it. Uh, about 13% alcohol, so it's a big one. And then its brother is uh, the same beer aged with black currants. So which one am I drinking right now? Uh, I think you are drinking the one with the black currants in it, and the other one is the plain. Charlie, I got to tell you, those are those flavors are far out. Yeah, I mean they're a lot of fruit notes in there, and it's very mealy. I mean that's got a lot to it. Oh yeah, that beer. It's a right big there. dense beer. Can you drink two, three, four of those, Charlie? Um, I mean I know you can. You could if you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, that's usually where we put people to bed and on the couch. But <laughs> it's a sleepy time beer. It definitely is a sleepy time beer. It's a fireside <laughs> beer. so And the beers change, especially with you and Absolutely. Belgian beers throughout the season. That's a delicious beer, and that's my Great. sipper. That'd be like scotch to me. I would yeah. sit fireside. Now, here's a totally different flavor for you. Which Try this. this. Now, which is this, Charlie? That's, that's the plain one. So that's the one without the black currants. But it's also got a lot of fruit notes to it as well. I'll tell you, the one with the black currants, Charlie, that's a home run. Thank you. That, that really has this huge flavor that, you know, yeah, that's a, a dinner beer. It's a big, it's a big yeah. beer. We brewed it in uh, cooperation with the Thirsty Monk. They were our collab partner. And they uh, started out in Asheville, North Carolina. And they've now opened uh, tap rooms in Denver and Portland. But they do all Belgian-style beers as well. So we thought, who better to partner with than another Belgian brewery? Oh, here in Colorado, Belgian-style beers, it's synonymous with brews beers to me. And you're, first of all, think up a story. We want a little fireside story okay. here in a moment, if you don't mind. Spangling. Yes, sir. All right, Taylor. Um, talk about, first of all, were you at Collab Fest today? We were not at Collab Fest. Ah, listen, I, I kind of commend a, people. Well, it was a simple, just uh, we dropped the ball, if, uh, if I'm being honest. We just really? Didn't, didn't okay. put it together in time. <laughs> we had done a collaboration with a brewery out of Mexico City called Falling Piano. 
And uh, the beer turned out wonderful. It's on tap right now. It's a cactus lime goza with uh, Yucatan sea salt. Amazing beer. And we went to register, and it was all uh, filled up. And it was completely our fault for not doing it sooner. So, Do we have glasses to taste? Uh, we, we do, but we're going to taste something different. A different right. co another collaboration we did, though not with the uh, brewery out of Mexico City. This is called Brettzilla. This is a collaboration we did with Bear Brewing Company, and it's what Chef Sean wanted to pair with the meal tonight. Oh, is this right here? All right. Yep. Um, so I'll just pass these down. So this is a collaboration with Bear Brewing. Uh, fermented 90% Britannomyces, which is a wild yeast. Normally, you uh, wouldn't right. use that as a primary fermentation. Yep. Uh, and then we also added Zinfandel grape must. Oh, there's another one. So there's a touch of a wine character. And then we dry hopped it with Nelson hops, which are a, a New Zealand hop variety that uh, we thought would go well with that with the beer and and what you have is kind of a really drinkable slightly funky uh wild ale there's no category for slightly this stupid uh, slightly <laughs> stupid is a good example i like it yeah a lot. yeah that's a good word it, it's a good beer man but it's easy drinking it cuts through the uh a lot of the fat and the meat that he had in the food so yeah. he liked it because that kind of you know that clean uh acidity just kind of Jump what right what it. is it in there, Taylor? There's a very distinct flavor in this beer that, that is resonating with me, and I can't put my finger on it. I think it's the wine, though. Yeah, that Zinfandel, wine must is a lot of the flavor. That wine must, uh, there's a big fruit, wine, kind of grapey character. Um, that definitely, I think, is the predominant uh, flavor and aroma I'm getting. If you smell it, you get a bit of that Brett funk. You get like a little, they describe it in the brewing industry, we describe it as barnyard. Kind of like a barnyardy funk. That comes from the wild yeast that we use. Oh, okay. And nice. Pretty so intense. What else, Terroir? Yeah, I'm excited to try the next one. So we got uh, our Moonlight in Vermont is an IPA, which uh, is kind of everybody's brewing IPAs these days. Do we have? Uh, yeah, this isn't uh, <laughs> sophisticated. <laughs> But this is how we used to drink beers. Right? So is this one of those big IPAs? Is this like this the American is, crazy is, that we've gone the, to? Uh, or? what they call the, the uh, New England IPA. Okay. So a little hazy, as you can see. Yeah. It should have a ton of kind of fruit aroma, some citrus. Not super bitter, uh, quite honestly. That's oh, not a bad IPA right I there, do folks. have more glasses, actually. That is not a bad That's IPA. That's a delicious IPA. Right yeah, so, that really is. Um, it's not leaving my tongue all... Chalky and yeah, that's kind of what we were going for. It's just something that's a good one. Tons of aroma, tons of flavor, not too bitter, not ho too high on the alcohol content. It's like six percent. A lot of these new IPAs will, but 8%. not over. I, you know, one of the things that's driving me nuts, man, is these all these local, not local, but all these brewers want to brew something that's just got too much of a bite. It just yeah. it leaves your mouth tasting like who, who thinks that's good. Uh, well, apparently. <laughs> wow, how do you throw that? Uh, 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 you know, a lot <laughs> hey, of people, Hey, would you throw someone under a bus? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, uh, but no, there's a big part of the beer drinking community who craves that. Kind of, they want they want their teeth, the enamel will come off their teeth from the hop acids. And, but, uh, you know, we like a more balanced IPA, so. I like it. Well, you've did. done a great nice job. One. You've you done like a great stories? job, Taylor. Yeah, I do. You do? Watch this. Zeppelin, stories, right? Here it comes. Charlie God and Kenny. Lay one on us. Okay, okay. So let me talk about white beer. So white beer or wit beer it was a beer that was been brewed since 1300. And in 1957, the last white beer brewery closed. About nine years later, a guy, by, a milkman by the name of Pierre Sellis, decided he was going to revive the style. So he opened the Hoogarten Brewery uh, in the town of Hoogarten, started making the white beer again. It was a huge success. Everybody loved it. He was doing really well, and then he had a fire, and it burned down part of the brewery, and he didn't have insurance, so he had to sell out to InBev, which is the parent company of Budweiser now. And so Pierre goes to Austin, Texas, and decides to open another brewery, and he opens the Cellus Brewery down there and starts making the beers he used to make in Belgium, and it's a huge hit. Everybody loves it. Uh, he can't make enough of it, so he gets into a partnership with Miller, and Miller, you know, kind of takes over, as they tend to do with, you know, anything mass-produced, and manages to put the brewery out of business in about a year. 
But just recently, Pierre goes back over, becomes a consultant, helps all sorts of stuff. He's a hero in, in Belgium, and he died a few years ago. But now his daughter has revived his old brewery in Austin, Texas, and is now making the Hoogarten brew, brews again with Pierre's recipes. And I'm going to Houston the week after next, so I'm really looking forward to getting by there and and uh, checking out the new line of Cellus beers. Revitalized brewery. That's so yeah. cool. Thank you for that story. And, again, we're, I think we're going to do nighttime beer stories with Charlie Gott and Kenny, <laughs> and they should be fireside uh, when it comes to beer. Uh, Kyle, me and your beer stories are so different. They I have to do we can <laughs> measure up to that. <laughs> you remember Alibis? I do. Have, oh, have my heavy gosh. Metal bar in Glendale. Yeah. Like, listen to what these guys are bringing <laughs> up. Right, right next to Jimmy's. You remember, yeah, Jimmy's. Or did it turn into Jimmy's eventually? Is that what Alibis turned into? Well, it was really interesting because uh, as kids, you figure out how can you drink beer? As a kid, you just want to drink beer. Uh, we found a way, but we. Uh, do you ever remember the term shoulder tapping? No. No. Shoulder tapping. Yes, was I remember it. You're asking hey, somebody. Hey, you're of fun. age. Yeah. I'm not. Could you, here's a 20. Would you buy me a 12 pack of beer? You can keep the change. Uh, shoulder tap. My daughter could tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few daughters, good and sons. Uh, shoulder tapping was an interesting thing as we were kids. We're going to continue the last stretch of booze in the news, all the booze news you can use with b block distilling. And Charlie, you're your spirits guy. Yeah, you, you absolutely. Like spirits. I love them. And uh, Taylor Reese. Oh, I love spirits. I actually live two blocks from the block. I, uh, yeah, two blocks from I call the that block. stumbling distance. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, <laughs> Spengelang, where'd you get that name? Spengelang's a jazz reference. So uh, we're located in the uh, neighborhood of Five Points in Denver, which has a rich jazz history. It's uh, the jazz drumming pattern you're used to hearing, that cymbal-driven kind of that. And they took over a place that I hated. It was the DMV. It was the DMV. <laughs> oh, yes, I have been to that DMV yes. there. Uh, no, you haven't. Now it's a brewery. Man. Now it's a brewery. Ah. I still get people literally every single yeah. day looking for the DMV. There is so. a God is what I say. Yeah. All right, thank you, guys. Charlie Gotten, Kenny, and Taylor Reese, uh, you guys are seriously doing great work in our local beer community. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Greg. I appreciate it. Kyle Zeppelin, stick around. The Block Distilling Company, they're coming up next at Booze and News, all the booze news you can use. It's up next on the Modern Eater Show on iHeartRadio. Thanks, Greg. Welcome back, Modern Eater Facebook family. We've got our last segment. We're heading into hyperlocal. Who better than this hunk, burning hunk of yearning <laughs> funk? We got JT from Pasture. Tell us about uh, uh, Pasture Provisions. Tell us what hyperlocal means to you. So uh, hyperlocal to Pasture Provisions is the entire foundation of our business. It's the bedrock. We wanted to find local farms that were doing sustainable, high quality agriculture and bring that to the front range market. So we primarily work with uh, Western Slope producers that are just doing really exceptional quality, high animal welfare standards wow. and giving back to the land and helping to make the land that they farm a better place than where they started. So uh, bringing that back to the front range Keeping it hyper local reduces the footprint of that um, food transporting from there. And then we bring it right to your door and wow. make it nice and sustainable. Use all kinds of recyclable packaging. And it's just a, the hyper local ecosystem is our whole business model. So. And that's great. So, chefs, as you're trying to get things dialed in for your spring summer menu, menu past your provisions. And remember, you heard it here on the Modern Eater. Thank you. We'll be right back. If you've got a business and need a website or need a graphic designer, F. Johnson Design does it all. Take the headache out of trying to build your own website or design graphics. Who has time for that? F. Johnson Design will get you up and running with a professional and great-looking website. Design sharp graphics to your specifications and have your site up faster than you think. Logo, package design, SEO coding, and more. F. Johnson Design did the Modern Eater's website. Go to the Modern Eater. One minute to the live some of their work. Reach out to F. Johnson Design at fjohnsondesign.com. 
Want to bake the best? Bake with the best. Little Rich here from Rockalitas Tortillas and the Modern Eater. Our wraps fold cold and don't break open, yet they're soft and delicious. What's my secret? Ardent Mills. Organic, ancient, and heirloom grains like quinoa, spelt, and more. Locally headquartered in Denver, Colorado, Ardent Mills provides the industry's broadest range of traditional and organic flours, whole grains, customized blends, and specialty products dedicated to providing the culinary industry with the next grains and unique plant-based ingredients. I love Ardent Mills, and I know you will too. To bake the best, you must use the best. Learn more at ardentmills.com. Hey, it's Greg and Jay. Thanks for tuning in tonight. If you missed any of this or any other deli- Live in 13, 12. Com, and you can see all the pictures, all the videos, and all the fun from Studio Kitchen Colorado. We love hyper Five, four, three, two. You're live. Thanks for tuning in. All right, back to the show here live from Studio Kitchen, Colorado. What a show, Jay. What do you think about all these awesome guests here? I'm thinking it's going good. I'm thinking stand to your left so you stay on camera. Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, Brian Freeman from Growers Organic, and we're here live with uh, the Block Distilling. It is a Block Distilling, and they have been pouring some incredible gin tonight. I've tasted the autumn gin. I have tasted the summer gin, which is basically their take on a... Not a gin and tonic. There's so much more in there, guys. So let me introduce. We've got two gentlemen right now from uh, the block, <laughs> block, the distilling. block Distilling. Cameron Weaver yep. is a co-owner with? I'm with Tyler Kennard. I'm yep. the beverage director at the Block Distilling Co. I love nice. It. Okay. So wait. Now tell me, Cameron, who's your co-owner? Uh, actually, two. My brother, Craig Weaver, and his wife, Michelle. What a cool little story. What got you into it? Uh, love of spirits, really. We just always loved our whiskeys and bourbons and brandies and all that and figured out how to make it, so we decided to go for it and see what would happen. I so, like going for it. Back yeah. on the show here. Sorry I was late, guys. It's all right. Well, but here, That's let me terrible. jump in because he says every drop is made right at your place, in-house. Every drop made in-house. That's right. And now you didn't bring a whiskey tonight, so that tells me you've got something aging and that you're not ready to bring to prime time. That's right. So we have about 40 barrels that are currently aging, and the first of which will be released December of this year. So let's talk about the dynamics of this because this is pretty important. Our friend Sean Smiley, who heads up the uh, Colorado Distillers Guild, he, he believes in you should suffer. It's like my mom, you know. You should suffer like I did when I was a kid. You shouldn't have anything, you know. I Two miles said. in the snow yeah, uphill. Yeah, up and down. Both ways. And, and that's the model. But you could have blended. We could you, have. You, you could have done a lot of things. Yeah. It, and it's a difficult proposition to sell the gin, the vodka, yep. have a thriving tasting room. Keep that going, and then have the barreling process to where it's like, hold on, hurry up and wait. No, right? look at their tagline, Greg. Look at that tagline. Every. But some people. Every drop. Some people are killing it. Some people, like uh, yeah. you look at um, Michael Myers at 291 in Colorado. He's for staving, unapologetically. Small barrels for staving right. and, and breaking all kinds of people's minds. They, I mean, he, they're winning awards left and right. So the notion of this traditional distilling, which you guys got a lot of street cred for that. I got to tell you what, that's a tough thing to do. But when your whiskey's released, you're going to have people jonesing like crack addicts out there, man. They're going to love, they can't wait to do that. So I love the model. I love the pun- punishment. Zeppelin, get, why do you have to be on your phone, man? <laughs> this is live. Why are you He's on He's talking phone, about man? crack addicts over here, man. We're, we talking, gotta, we're we gotta talking about suffering. So you got to tag us at least if you're going to be on your phone. You know? just, <laughs> just to catch Zeppelin up, man, there's a lot of models in the distilling community where you, you either suffer or you don't. You, you take your whiskey and you put it in barrels and you work with what you have, even to the point of where people will sell white whiskey. Right, right. I mean, just to get. Oh, but try what about the people that are selling someone else's whiskey blended into theirs? I no, don't know Cam- where I go with that. Cameron, I don't know. Yes. You got to be a multi zillionaire, right? Uh, You're sitting on more, barrels. more yep. money than you Wait know to deal with, right? <laughs> uh, so you, ent- you, you entered into Rhino, good yep. partnership. Did Zeppelin have anything to do with that? No, nothing. Absolutely not. No, not really. They just made it happen all on their own. <laughs> We, we knew our landlord, and 
he wanted to get out of the space and offered it up to us, and that's really what drove us to get into that space. I watched your space since day, day one, man. I mean, you guys were just in there hammering, struggling, doing what it takes to do, putting the money down. Licensing is a whole different ball game. Oh, yeah. Of when you even open up to have your t tasting room. How do you guys, I mean, that thought process, the philosophy, you're very well esteemed already in the distilling community. Why do you think you are? Because Either one of you guys, take it on. First, I'd like to say we're we're willing to wait. We're we're not trying to push product that's not ours. We're not trying to push product that's not good. Um, every single product that we sell, we would drink ourselves, and that's big in the distilling community because if you see us at the tasting room. We're drinking our own stuff you could because have blended. we like it. You could have blended. You could have. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's not our business model, though. We're, we're in it to make our own stuff and make it right. Let me, let me slide to a small business side of barrels. this. 40 barrels? Yeah. 40 barrels. 40 barrels. So far. And Continuously how many toasts are ready producing. to go? There's like an, a, a shortage of wood that's coming. Barrels are, like, difficult right now. Well, the, the cooperage, that whole area is kind of slowed down and is trying to c catch back up to the craft distilling world because the boom for craft distilling is really taking off right now. Yeah, so. I mean, up there with coffee. I mean, breweries, <coughs> excuse me, breweries are tapering off. Distilleries were right where they should be. And um, your future, you guys, I love... Thanks for joining us tonight. You're not Absolutely. going anywhere. You're going to shake up some drinks for us here. That's Absolutely. right. What do you got? So we're going to do a summer gin uh, tart sour. So it's going to be an egg white sour, a fizz, um, with a little bit of a house-made aperitif. So it's going to be a little bit sour, a little bit bitter, a little bit peppery all at the same time. If you're not on Facebook Live, you're not alive. That's Mix right. up Check this it drink. Out. Check and, it I, out. and I want to tell a little story as Kyle Zeppelin's here with me. Zeppelin's, uh, I mean, we literally have known each other forever and a day. Uh, there was a time to where we rushed home with our new boombox radio, Zeppelin, right? With two, uh, Cheech and Chong was the kind of the, the tape that inspired us, right? You actually turned it into a career. I did turn it. <laughs> How weird is that? But there was a weekend show. Tom Jensen on KOA had a show called Hit and Get. And you would have 15 seconds to call in. And Kyle and I did a show called The Insulters. And we would just insult people, man. I mean, that was just what we wanted to do at the time. But it was so much fun. And we did that in the middle of the night. What was it, midnight, Kyle? It's amazing what you can do. Like, What do you remember pre from that? Before you spend all your time chasing girls around, it's, uh, <laughs> you have a lot of time in your hands. <laughs> what you have time for. Um, Denver means a lot to you, Kyle, right? It can't get away from it. Uh, I don't know if just can't make things happen in other places. You just want to kind of grow what you have, and uh, this is home. Your dad had an 82nd birthday this past week, Mickey Zeppelin, a legend in Colorado. He's definitely put in the time, three major urban neighborhoods, Lodo kind of before anyone else or at this, around the same time as Dana Crawford, Golden Triangle. Um, now Rhino for the last 20 years helping put that on the map, but um, it's not one guy or one move. It's the culmination of a lot of people's efforts. What do you think of this culinary church? Um, this place is amazing. I can't believe I feel horrible that I haven't been out here that much. You but, should. Uh, I didn't get invited. So. Ah, well, listen, never need an invite. And thank you for everything that you do. I love you, Kyle, so much. Thanks, uh, thanks for including me. Keep up all the great work promoting all these local businesses. Um, it's amazing what you guys are doing. Block Distilling, what's the address? 2990 Larimer. And Greg, let me Go throw Block him. Distilling real yeah, quick. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, have a great night. <laughs> have a great night. Thanks, Block <laughs> Distilling. You guys Thank are you. awesome. Zeppelin, you're cool, man. I love you, brother.